on this episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud, Managing Containers with Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the container management solution that Google open sourced based on their experience managing containers. Uh, some people have said that it's Borg Lite, uh, which is a, an internal Google code name for part of their container management environment, or at least one version of their many container management environments that they've done in the past. What it isn't though, is it's not a container runtime. Uh, so the most comparable system that people talk about today is Docker. Um, Kubernetes is like a part of the Docker ecosystem where Docker is made up of things like the Docker engine, Docker as orchestration, Docker Swarm as multi-system orchestration, uh, Docker Compose as managing the deployment of multi-system orchestrated containers. All those components are in the Docker space Kubernetes addresses basically the orchestration and uh, 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 systems modeling of the Docker Swarm and Docker Compose functionality in a sense. Um, so Kubernetes first off uh, takes this takes a model that it's not just a single container that's important. It might be that you describe your service as a single container, um, but when you're describing a service in the Kubernetes space, you're talking about a pod. A pod then describes locally the set of containers that need to run in a consistent local fashion. Uh, so really, at its simplest, it would be a single container in a pod. So there's effectively a layer of abstraction that isn't always needed. But the nice thing about a pod is that you can also say, well, maybe I actually have two or three containers that need to sit together. An example would be a, a web service front end, so an Nginx web server and a, set, a, a separate container that just runs the application control code that sits behind that web service engine. So the Nginx component is really there to route commands and requests into the next container, which actually then does the processing. Uh, tying those two together in a pod is part of the Kubernetes systems model. Now pods then are horizontally scalable, so you can actually create replicas of a pod, and there's a separate control function called a replication controller that describes how many pods are running, uh, makes sure that they're somewhat distributed, uses a, a local scheduling capability to do that distribution, uh, and manages the life cycle of a pod. So in a replication controller environment, even if you say I had only like one pod running, the replication controller will guarantee that there's always one pod running. Um, so that's, that's what the function of the replication controller is. Now, the next piece of the puzzle is as I'm starting to scale my system horizontally, as I start adding more and more pods, I need to actually make sure that people can find those pods, especially as their addresses potentially change. Because every time I spin up a pod, it's, it's presentation address and potentially even the ports that it's using to present uh, the, the specific resources within the container are going to change. In order to manage that, there's a concept of a service that gets, gets created. So another description component that describes how you actually want to expose the internal container related resources to the outside world. Um, and that service component also manages the load balancing function that is a part of the Kubernetes environment. So at least at the container and pod level, you can load balance those resources uh, amongst themselves so that, that requests will show up and be directed to the next available resource to respond to that request using service as the way of actually managing what resources are being load balanced. In other words, where am I directing traffic uh, within my service rather than within a specific pod? Now, on top of that, the service also does have the concept of an external load balancer. So in order to actually get into uh, an environment, and this is true actually bit, pretty much across all container systems, there's often an internal network, uh, an overlay network of some nature, um, or a point-to-point -point network of some nature that you can't get to from the outside world except through very specific released capabilities. And that's another thing that the service actually implements is connectivity into an external load balancing uh, capability, or at least an external presentation layer to say on all of these particular physical hosts where these pods exist, uh, there is a port that you can talk to to actually get access to the resources within the pod. Uh, often that would then be tied into an external load balancer. And in the Amazon and Google uh, compute engine spaces, uh, a Kubernetes deployment can actually tie into the local service enabled load balancing resources. Um, if you actually deploy Kubernetes yourself, you actually have to figure out how to implement that, that load balancing function directly. Uh, but that now enables an end to end service. And so from the Kubernetes worldview, the piece that's missing is effectively the container engine. How am I managing my images? How am I creating my images? How am I actually running my images? And so the most common format for that is to actually use Docker 
as the image engine or the container engine rather, uh, and have Kubernetes then manage effectively the scale and distribution and running life cycle of those containers. So in that case, you would follow the Docker process and you can actually check out our, our, our Docker session uh, to get an idea of how Docker works to manage the, the, the image life cycle, the, the little container image life cycle or set of containers for your application life cycle, and then map into a, a, a Kubernetes pod for actually spinning up those containers, a replication controller description that would talk about life cycle of those containers and deal with rolling upgrades and things of that nature. And then a service that would describe how you would actually get access to your microservice or other application that you've deployed within those container environments. And that is the Kubernetes worldview of the container service space. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. In addition, if you want to stay apprised of the latest ongoing updates in the cloud space, uh, sign up for our Twitter feed and our mailing list. We also update you on upcoming webinars and classes that we provide.